Hi, it's Jane here from Think Smart Accounting. Just wanted to jump on here and share a quick video, just a little um, demonstration about um, how we use payroll for zero. So I've had a lot of questions um, lately where it comes to adding in a new employee and uh, apl um, applying them with leave, superannuation, all their deed, everything you need to add a new employee. So um, I'm screenshotting um, the demonstration. I'm using a demo company uh, that Zero has here. So all the information you see is absolutely uh, fake. It's just for demo purposes only. So uh, I'm just going to go through here and uh, I'll try and be as basic as possible. Uh, and try and try and explain things simply for you. So first of all, we you'd log into Zero um, using your credentials. Uh, if you have Zero uh, activated with payroll, you'll see a payroll um, tab up the top here. So we just want to click on that. After that, you would hit employees. So here, this demo company already has some employees. So normally, uh, you wouldn't see any names if you don't have any employees here. So first of all, you want to click on Add Employee. You can type in some basic information. Just pick a random birthday here. You can add in their job title. This is probably handy if you've got a lot of employees. Uh, if you've got someone assigned to just do payroll, um, you know they might need to know uh, which which person does what job. Gender, that's also optional. All of these other items are optional, so you can just go through and fill all of those out. It does want an address though, so. Just fill that in. It's also a good idea to pop in an emergency contact in there as well. So once you've got all that done, we hit save. Once that's done, you get all you can see all these tabs up the top here. So we just want to go through each of these tabs. their start date, pick the payroll calendar. Uh, I'll show you where to edit this payroll calendar but usually there's some already input in so uh, weekly or fortnightly so we can just go weekly. Employee group classifications, we normally leave those Perhaps they're useful if you've got a big company or something like that. Same as holiday group, I've never had to use that myself. And ordinary earnings rate, so that's, you can also edit that too in the payroll settings. So ordinary hours is, is the normal one that's always in there. Authorised to approve leave, you'd normally leave that blank as well, you know, unless you know, it's a manager or, you know, a payroll officer or something like that. Same as the timesheets. So this is where you'd add in superannuation membership. Now, I'll click on that just to show you what it looks like. But what you need to do here um, is actually go into 
are the settings for superannuation and add in each employee's superannuation fund and then they will show up in this um, add superannuation membership area. So we'll just hit save for that one. Next is taxes. This is where you enter in all the stuff that uh, if you've got them to fill out one of those TFN declaration forms, that's where you transfer some of that information into this. So you pop in their TFN. Um, I don't know if it'll let me do a fake one unless I get the right amount of numbers right. How they're employed, full-time, part-time, casual. Then you tick these as per um, what they, whatever they've filled out on the um, declaration form. Tax-free threshold is a normal one. Generally, if someone's only got one job, they want that ticked, otherwise they're gonna be paying a lot of tax. legit number here so just for this demo I'm going to pop that in there no TFN go through to the leave tab This is where if you've got a full-time or part-time employee, you'd assign um, the leave types for them. So we'd go assign leave type, annual leave and uh, personal carers leave are the two that you want. So annual leave is what it says, annual leave and personal carers leave is sick leave. So. Annual leave for a standard um, full-time employee is 152 hours. Uh, so the calculation method is usually a fixed amount and you just go 152. Um, so that's for an employee doing 38 hours a week. If you've got a part-time employee, you just work that out as per how many hours they do each week. And you can see here it accumulates uh, 2.9151 hours each week and annual leave is paid out so we want to um, make sure that that is selected there. So that's annual leave, we do another one for sick leave which is the personal carers leave, fixed amount and that is uh, half the amount of what annual leave would be so normally 76 hours for a full time employee and sick leave isn't paid out. So if there's any other leave types that your company um, does in particular, uh, you know, they're, they're all listed here. So you just adjust them accordingly as to how many hours it, it works out for, for each individual employee. Right. So that's set up. This is what it says it is, it, you know, you add the bank account details. So you've got a record here uh, when you go to pay them. This is also good if you do have a lot of employees and you do the um, multiple funds transfer where you upload what's called an ABA file directly to your bank account. So great if you've got 20 employees because you can just do a single pay run and then download the file and upload that file to your bank account rather than having to go into the bank and pay each individual person manually. It just saves heaps of time by uploading um, the ABA file. But you've got to have that uh, bank account entered in here. Pay slips, pay slips will show in here. Uh, pay template. Um, 
when you do a pay run, that is the uh, place you need to go uh, to set up their pays, basically. So we'd go to um, add earnings line. Allowances, accept tax. You generally click on ordinary hours for that one and enter the rate or if they're on an annual salary, like, you know, you, you've put them on a salary of $50,000 $50, a year, you would just click on annual salary and then it would automatically input the amount of hours and the wage each week. Otherwise, uh, the rate is, you'd enter in like an hourly rate, you know, maybe $25 an hour or something like that. Um, obviously, if they're casual, you would do the enter rate and input the amount of hours each week. So here, uh, we do ordinary hours, then the, we type in the amount of hours here, which is 38 and 25, $25 an hour. Now once that's in there, that remains the same each week, each, each fortnight, whenever you do the pay run, um, that remains the same. Deduction line, we don't, that's not a common one, so I'm not going to go into that. Superannuation line, you have to have that in there. Um, and you'll be able to select the um, superannuation account once you have entered in those superannuation details for that employee. Um, there'll be a drop down there to select that. If you don't have a superannuation fund, it's just going to say fund details pending. And the reimbursement line as well, that's, that's not a common one, so I'm not going to go into that today either. The opening balances and notes, uh, I'm not going to go into that. I don't know how many people use that, so I don't think it's necessary to talk about that today. And same as the notes. That might come in handy perhaps if you've got a big corporation and you need to keep track of people. All right. So if we go back to payroll employees, we should be able to see Jane Smith here. Yes. Jane Smith has been added, so great. So that's all done. That's how you add um, add an employee. So pretty simple, yeah. Just follow all the steps and keep watching this video if you if you get stuck. The next video I want to talk about is how to um, assign leave, how to, how to apply for leave, and also um, going into more detail about where you enter in the superannuation fund, the settings for payroll, adding in uh, different um, hours types and um, leave types and all that kind of stuff. So uh, next video uh, we'll go into a little bit more detail on those sorts of things. So thanks for watching. I hope it's been helpful and uh, yeah stay tuned for the next video.